uh, exchanges information with another jurisdiction, which is a, a partner member to the OECD Global Forum. And what is required here is that uh, financial institutions under the convention will be required uh, to provide this information to the competent authorities. And for Uganda, Uganda Revenue Authority is the competent authority. And then this information will be automatically exchanged with the other jurisdictions on resident taxpayers holding assets in the foreign jurisdictions. Which type of information will be exchanged? Financial accounts information held in banks, insurers and investment ent entities, such as funds in uh, trusts held by non-residents, including the identity of the account holder, the beneficial ownership information, and then uh, transactions that relate to bank accounts, including uh, bank balances and transactions that have occurred throughout the period. And also other earnings like dividends, incomes that are made from sales, proceeds from assets will be shared. That is the concept of uh, automatic exchange of information. Now for Uganda, Uganda joined the Global Forum, became one of the members of the Global Forum, which is an initiative under the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development in 2012. And now we are 162 member countries that are seeking to, to the convention. And uh, Uganda already started implementing the exchange of information on request, which I highlighted to you that uh, if I'm conducting an investigation or I have a tax matter to examine, and I have a taxpayer A and there is information that uh, possibly I need on part of their transaction they conducted in the jurisdiction a, I can be able to write to that jurisdiction and they provide me that information and I use it for tax purposes. So there we have made over 265 requests and uh, over 200 billion has been uh, collected in revenue from that external information. Now the journey is on for automatic exchange of information. Uganda made a commitment in 2021 to implementing the automatic exchange of information standard. And uh, come September 2025, we shall be receiving the information automatically. My commissioner talked about the law that was enacted effective 1st July. And that's the law that will enable us to obtain this information. And when Uganda finally implements the automatic exchange of information, we shall join a network of over 120 countries that we shall be receiving information from uh, regarding resident taxpayers who hold accounts, financial information, assets in foreign jurisdictions that if you have declared it already, that will be no problem. How will this occur? The exchange of information will start with the, the financial institutions. Some are already represented in this room. You are required under the, the newly enacted law to provide information, to do a due diligence on all accounts to identify um, non-resident accounts. And this will start by December 2024. For the, commercial, for the financial institutions in Uganda, you'll be required to provide this information to the competent authority, which is Uganda Revenue Authority. And this information will be remitted to our treaty partners. And in the same way, come uh, uh, between January and 20, 
January to December 2024, we shall uh, be collecting that information. And when it comes to September 2025, that information shall be received automatically by Uganda Revenue Authority for review of your tax matters. Now, why the event of today, the Voluntary Disclosure Program, our chief guest uh, and uh, our guests in the room, is for us not to wait for September 2025, when the taxman will receive the information automatically. And uh, because when it comes to that time, we shall have the information, and then we shall assess your, your compliance uh, status. The Voluntary Disclosure Program is here for Uganda. And this is an opportunity that we have. Now it's about 20 months. And I know uh, my Commissioner General will be may be promising some of the benefits that we need to, uh, to anticipate in this period of 20 months, that you come front and uh, bring this information that you can enjoy. The Voluntary Disclosure Program, it is for persons who are resident for tax purposes in Uganda, and they are holding offshore financial information. And the launch today is to invite you to come and declare to URA, right from now up to June 2025. Then you will tap into the VDP benefit scheme, which will be unveiled by the Commissioner General and our chief guest. And uh, me, David, as the tax investigator, I will not have any problem with you. How will this happen? How to disclose? Like the Commissioner already highlighted, a team has been uh, extensively trained. We are prepared to handle this exercise. And uh, we have availed a platform. We have a form called the Foreign Assets Disclosure Form that is already up and running on the URA web portal. You get there and download it, uh, and then fill it, attach any supporting documents. The form highlights some of the supporting documents. For example, if you are declaring a uh, movable property that you own in the offshore, you should be able to indicate ownership, how you control it and the interests you have, and maybe the details of the bank accounts that you hold. Then this form is, will be submitted. In the interim, we are starting with the download that you can feel and feel the comfort of filling the form and upload. Uh, but shortly, we shall be as well creating a web option that you can autom automatically fill in and that information flows through to our team. Now, the VDP specialist team that the commissioner talked about that is already trained will receive this information, examine the disclosure, of course, the principles of voluntary disclosure is that uh, if you have any taxes that you think you, you need to pay, you self-declare, make a payment, and one of the attachments is a payment registration number, and you are simply informing the commissioner general that yes, I had this, and I have declared, I have even paid the taxes. So the team will just be able to receive that, examine it, if there are any additional information they need from you, uh, we shall request for that information. But most importantly, will be to usher you into uh, taking on the benefits scheme that's embedded within the voluntary disclosure program. Because you have come voluntarily, and we should be able to lay a red carpet for you as a compliant uh, taxpayer. So that is the journey that we are starting today. 
And uh, I want to thank you for listening to me. May God bless you all. A powerful Asante Sana for Mr. David Dongo. Asante Sana. Uh, our guest of honor and uh, the deputy secretary, deputy treasurer to the state, uh, Mr. Chailub. I would like to use this opportunity to let you know that we do have a lot more players uh, in the economic field that have joined us in uh, the last couple of minutes. And that is none other than Opportunity Bank, they've made it here. Equity Bank has made it here. Citibank has made it here. Finance Trust, Centenary Bank, uh, Financial Intelligence Authority, as well as PKF Advisory, they are all here in a very good representation, but that's not all, because we also do have uh, Uganda's significant high net worth individuals that have made it here, and uh, they've been listening to David Dongo's presentation with uh, very keen attention. And uh, of course, this is none other than uh, Mama Alice Karugaba, Nina Interiors, she's here, Anil Patel, the Dembe team, they are well represented. Japheth Kato, Birunji Sepas, Damani Anil, Dr. Sudil Ruparelia, Haji Yasa Ahmed uh, of Harris International, Matsiko Joseph, KAA Advocates, Mr. Rob Nobat Kagoro, Deloitte, Mr. Charles Lubega, the Carrier family, they are here as well as the Mulo family. If you live in uh, Greater Masaka, I'm sure that you are very familiar with their story and uh, what they've been able to do in this, our beautiful country. We also do have members of the fourth estate who are going to make sure that uh, the big story that we are unleashing here today gets spread to the farthest corners of Uganda so that people are able to partake of this opportunity. And uh, of course we have KFM together with Dembe, we have Baba TV, we have Capital FM, we have Smart 24, we have Salt TV, The Observer, New Vision, BBS Terrafina, NBS TV, Uganda Radio Network, Delta, Bukede TV, UBC, Mbona, Bukede The Paper, Dream TV, Daily Star, SML News, and uh, The Voice Uganda. This story, I'm confident, is going to go absolutely everywhere because this is the kind of content that every person who is playing big in uh, the Ugandan business space must get to know about. And that, ladies and gentlemen, brings us to the next item of the agenda, and this is where I'll get to hand over to uh, my dear colleague from URA, business policy, and that's none other than uh, the Wood Mackenzie winner, Tracy Akello of Uganda Revenue Authority. Why do I get a feeling it's only URA clapping? Tracy is a national asset. Let's give her a, a huge round of applause. Uh, Tracy will invite her panelists and take it away. A good afternoon to all of you. Our chief guest, Mr. Uchayulab, our commissioner general, Mr. John Musenguzi, our chief collector, CPA of the year, Mr. Rachel Langat, our commissioner, 
Tax Investigation, Mr. Dennis Kogonza, and our Commissioner, Customs Department, Mr. Abel Kagumire. All protocol is observed. You're very welcome to the distinguished panelists that we are going to have this afternoon. Since they say ladies first, I'll go with Miss Pamela Natamba, who is a partner at the PWC and is here to represent our tax consultants and will give us a view and her take on automatic exchange of information. Thank you. You're welcome, please. Ms. Pamela, you're welcome. Uh, next, I would like to call upon our chief collector, Ms. Sarah Chelangat. I will explain why I'm calling her the chief collector. It's simply because she's the commissioner of domestic taxes. That's the reason I'm calling her the chief collector. Ms. Sarah Chelangat is the commissioner of domestic tax department of the Uganda Revenue Authority. And she's the chief collector because she goes into the trenches to actually do the audits and carry her bag everywhere to be able to fill the revenue basket. Ms. Sarah Chalangat, you're welcome. Um, I would like to then call upon our HMRC policy expert, Mr. Gareth Morgan. Mr. Gareth will give us an insight into how automatic exchange of information got set into the UK and neighboring jurisdictions, among other things. I will then welcome our implementing expert, Mr. Ian Black from the HMRC. Ian will mostly take us through how this has been implemented and the challenges that have been faced in the UK and other jurisdictions. Last, I'd like to call upon our key policy person here, Mr. Alex Biaruhanga from Solicitor General's Office. Mr. Alex is our senior drafts person. He's actually a principal state attorney very good at policy and has a lot of knowledge in terms of drafting. For those who have drafted, you, you'll appreciate that he's been the person behind the wording in all the tax laws that we've taken a beating for. Alex, you're welcome. That, ladies and gentlemen, is our panel today. Without wasting time, We'll get started. I'll not ask the panel to introduce themselves because I've done that. My first question will go to Ms. Pamela. As a tax expert, what's your understanding of the Mutual Administrative Assistance in Tax Matters Implementation Act 2023 in as far as exchange of automatic, automatic exchange of information is concerned?
Thank you, Pamela. In the interest of time, I know we can talk about that the entire day. We'll move to our next question. Uh, this will go to Mr. Alex Biaruhanga. Uh, what should taxpayers expect upon full implementation of the automatic exchange of information in this country? In other words, what are the benefits that Uganda as a country is looking forward to attain from the automatic exchange of information? Uh, thank you, moderator. All protocols observed. I'm honored to be here. Uh, straight to the question, I think we have a lot to benefit. If at all this program is implemented. I know it has been a journey. We started way back in 2011, I think when the conversion was we became, uh, we signed the conversion, acceded to the conversion. 2023 was a milestone where we domesticated uh, the conversion, the mark, and the standards. So what are the benefits? What are we likely to benefit if the automatic exchange of information program is fully implemented? One, this is a strategy uh, to ensure that all the taxpayers pay their fair share of the tax, but most importantly, in the right place and at the right time. So that's one of the benefits. And this will be through recovery of undeclared revenue from assets mainly held offshore. Moderator, the second benefit that I think is widening the tax base. Uh, ultimately, that will increase uh, tax revenue and the level of fairness. Because it's a cause that we have all to contribute to and pay. Moderator, the third benefit, in my own opinion, is that this is going to help the tax authorities, both here and uh, the member states, to the conversion, 
to investigate and identify non-resident taxpayers who invade taxes in one or the other in their home of uh, their home of country or the receiving country uh, we also lack a lot of statistics and the statistics are key for planning purposes through exchange of information this will be a source of statistics most especially for policy formulation this information is relevant it is important to help us generate statistics that can ultimately inform our policy formulation lastly uh, moderator there are other indirect benefits or consequential benefits if this program is rolled out and it is a success uh, we have issues to do with and money laundering this can be a tool to be used we have issues to do with corruption this is something that we can use that information for but most importantly combating financing of uh, allow me cut you short on that uh, out of your three minutes for that question uh, thank you for the benefits you've highlighted prudent to note is the fact that this law was informed as a result of illicit financial flows which had gone on a high in africa as a whole so yes true to it it's going to benefit uganda and other countries at large who have ascended to it in terms of controlling corruption and illicit financial flows. Uh, my next question will go to Gareth Morgan, would like to pick a leaf from what other jurisdictions have done. Gareth, please tell us about how automatic exchange of information and voluntary disclosure program was legalized in the UK and how it's being operated.
Thank you for that insight. Sorry, we've been caught up with time for your three minutes. I'll then move to the CPA of the year. I would like to address the issue of why transparency in cross-border financial transactions is important for Uganda as a country in terms of revenue and investment. Why transparency in cross-border financial There is what we call credit. You may have paid tax offshore. Uganda may not have to tax you more. Uganda will just want that fare of tax that would be equivalent to the Ugandan tax had you earned that income here. So it is really leveling the ground and ensuring that there is more transparency, that we are able to have everyone pay a fair share of tax. My colleague Alex was talking about fairness in taxation and ensuring that there is equity. If we are sourcing income, regardless if it is an online payment, you've made profit out of online sale, let this taxman get a fair share of this tax. Let us declare it in the correct jurisdiction because countries have a mandate to tax their residents fairly and fully, correctly through this information. So once we get this information, we are going to tax you fairly, we are going to tax the correct fair share of the tax, and even give you the credit that you may be not aware. And most importantly also, if now you embrace voluntary disclosure, you will be able to, to save yourself from potential penalties, reputation risk, because when we start asking for this information, it's really fair if you come up front and tell us I have these assets, I have these investments, and we will just tax what is due to us and give you a relief that will be due to you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. The CPA of the Yadda was as my direct commissioner, so I had to oblige to the warning not to cut her short. And uh, thank you for the presentation. It's been elaborate and educateful, educating. Yeah, like the saying says, if everyone pays a little, no one has to pay too much as we develop Uganda together. I'll then take my question to Ian. Ian Black, how has voluntary disclosure been implemented in the UK and other jurisdictions from your experience as a compliancy? Drive, please share your experience. Hello, 
Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm sure that Madam Moderator will forgive me if I go a little bit over time because this is a topic I could talk about at length. Um, I'm going to speak about the reasons that you should voluntarily disclose. And this is something I deal with all the time. We've talked in general on this stage about the process of voluntary disclosure, what it's like for Uganda. But what a lot of you people will be thinking is, what does it mean to me? Why should I enter into this? And in the UK, we have had several voluntary disclosure programs, some for specific taxes that we're going to target with compliance work, some ahead of some new investigation powers that we get, including the automatic exchange of information, which is a real big one. It means that the URA is going to have access to information at a level that he has never had before. And we tend to get, for all of our uh, disclosure programs, three different types of customers. And all of those customers start the same way. They start by approaching somebody like our colleague from Pricewaterhouse. And they either say, this is me, or is this me, or should this be me? This is me tend to be people who know they're outside of tax compliance, and it worries them and they want to be inside tax compliance, and they see the voluntary disclosure opportunity as a way to get them back to where they want to be, and they approach their agent and they say, make this happen. The second group of people, is this me, aren't certain. They hear the terms of the voluntary disclosure and think this might apply to me, and they go and ask their agent and say, is this me, should I do this? And the agent can help guide them back into compliance and take advantage of the really preferential terms you get with a voluntary disclosure. And then the third group of, should this be me, will be a lot of people in this room who make the business calculation. Is it better for me to disclose or not? And with the, the upcoming information that is going to be given to URA, it's usually overwhelming, yes. But not just for that reason. We shouldn't think of this in terms of, I'm going to be caught by the tax man if I don't pay my taxes. We should think of this in terms of, this makes perfect financial sense for me. The more tax revenue that is collected by the URA, the better the infrastructure. The better the infrastructure, the more money the business makes. With higher quality roads leading to the place of business, the business makes more money. With better hospitals and better taking care of people, your workforce is happier and healthier and we make more money. And that leads to more tax which can be collected, which in turn can fuel more infrastructure, which makes more money. And a lot of times, and this is speaking completely frankly and from experience, the thing that blocks people from making that perfectly rational decision of disclosing and paying is the advantage the guy in the next door business gets. If you disclose and they don't, but what we're seeing here is, with the automatic exchange of information, if you disclose and they don't, they will pay more than you because the URA will find out where their money is. So what we end up with is a perfectly sensible business decision that puts everybody in the same direction. It means that URA business and the accountants are all pushing towards the same goal, which ultimately ends up with everybody being wealthier. And if anybody would like to speak to me one-to-one -one after this is done and describe their personal situation and hear more about how it makes sense, uh, I'll be around for some time after I've been on this panel. Please feel free to find me Thank and ask you, how it Ian. works in the UK. Thank you, Ian. Um. Sorry, I have to cut you short. Uh, thank you for that very great insight. Uh, and like you've had members, ladies and gentlemen, you can always get in touch with Ian after this session to have a deeper understanding of how voluntary disclosure program and automatic exchange of information has been implemented in the UK and the neighboring jurisdictions. I'll go straight on to Pamela to give us her insight on how voluntary disclosure in relation to automatic exchange of information will impact compliance or shape tax compliance in Uganda. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy, again. Um, I think Alex and, and Sarah already alluded to, or didn't allude, really mentioned the aspect of there will be widening of the tax base, which is one of the obvious um, 
intentions or objectives of this program. Listening to, I think it was David who presented earlier and said URA has collected 200 billion through the exchange of information on request. You know, that already speaks volumes because if we can collect 200 billion uh, when we are only requesting for information, how about when it's automatic? Because there's going to be so much information that the URA is going to have and be able to work with that. But I guess for me the challenge for the URA is to say uh, how are we equipping the teams? Because uh, I, I, good, we have a manager already that is taking care of that team. There will have to be a, a big team that is equipped to be able to handle and, and be prepared. But also importantly to have stakeholder engagement and education. We've, we started off here, which is a good thing. There's going to have to be continuous engagement for people to appreciate what is this law all about? What do I need to do? And to go even further to different groups to get them to appreciate. There will need to be you know, a clear strategy which with all the much information that we have, how do we then make sure that we are utilizing it well? Who are we targeting? How are we engaging them? Uh, you know, are there clear procedures, manuals that have been designed to then you know, follow through? And at the end of the day, also monitor uh, the impact that that request is having so that there's, there's coordination of, of information. I was also reading, I think it was the um, Africa Initiative report uh, that, that spoke to what countries in Africa have done so far in 2022, and I think the number there was 76.6 euros, 76.6 uh, .6 million euros in terms of what has been collected through this program. And of that, 10 came from directly financial information. So it has the potential to generate a lot of money for the tax authority, but we just have to make sure that we streamline the processes. Uh, and, and lastly, sorry, okay. to make sure that we also have friendly collaboration with the taxpayers. When I put myself in the shoes of the people that are receiving this law, people will be scared. And you know, the, the default setting is to think Am I even going to survive this or I'm going to close business? So for URA to be able to amicably engage with taxpayers, implement whatever promises are made on the side of waiving penalties and interest, I think that will help. Thank you. Thank you, Pamela, for that. Yes, she's given her insights, which are very great, and I hope we've taken note of most of them. But key to that is widening of the tax base. I'll then move to Gareth Morgan. Uh, what, is, what does voluntary disclosure program mean for your taxpayers in the UK? And what would the Ugandan public or the Ugandan citizens or residents take from your experience? Thank you very much. Um, so in, in terms of um, what disclosure means in, in the UK. Um, I think disclosure is really something where um, people are more, more able to get, get to the point where they're feeling the, the benefits from the disclosure regime. They're not going to be falling into the bit where there's potential penalties, which can be up to 200%. Um, there's a lot of uh, advantage in disclosing before inf information comes into the, the UK. I think in terms of um, Ugandan citizens, that we're already preparing information for exchange, and that will be exchanged with Uganda in 2025. Um, and we're obviously not alone in, in that. There's plenty of other jurisdictions that are going to be um, doing that. Um, I, I think um, the, there's a num as Ian said, there's a number of different reasons why people might want to um, disclose, but I, I guess ultimately by disclosing, you gain a, a level of um, business certainty and you, you know, you, you know at that point um, that your tax affairs are sorted and that 
you, you're not going to face consequences where you could pot potentially be named, you could receive penalties, um, you could potentially be imprisoned, in, certainly in the UK. Thank you, Gareth. Uh, yes, I hope uh, taxpayers have gotten hint of that and the benefits of voluntary disclosure. I'll move to Ms. Sarah Chalangat. We'll take the second question. Uh, who is eligible for the foreign assets disclosure? And if you know them or if they are stated, how do they declare and what should they expect after declaring? Thank you, Tracy. We, in terms of eligibility, we, we expect all resident taxpayers who have offshore investments. Investments are in different categories. You may have money that you have uh, invested in foreign countries and there is some income that you are earning. It could be property, immovable property, and you are gaining some money from that. It could be businesses, shares, businesses that you invest there. It could be even intangible assets where you are earning royalties, interest, dividends, all, all forms of investments or forms of businesses that you earn money in those offshore countries. But we are also looking at non-residents who, who earn money. But again, we are looking at earning money from here. When you look at rules of uh, residence, for non-resident, you should have been here for less than 183 days, which is approximately six months. You have sourced income here. We will only tax you on the income that you have sourced here. And so that is, again, the limitation of scope in terms of taxation. Uh, the other part of the question was? If the persons have declared, what should they expect? Yeah, in terms of declaration, we, already, we have procedures of declaring. Uh, the manager, Automatic Exchange, talked about a form which you can get from our web portal, and then you go and populate. But when you declare, we will, we will, you will expect that we will engage with you. We will engage with you and study this information. In some instances, we may need to collaborate some of the information, but where we feel that this information is credible, then we will be able to assess the correct tax. Like I indicated, if there is a window for you to also get a foreign tax credit in respect to foreign tax paid, we will give you that credit. And if it is also a credit that is within the provisions of uh, double tax treaties, we will give you. So sometimes it's really for transparency. You may not have to pay a lot of tax, but it will help us also get tax on other taxpayers where you are declaring this income. I think I'm allowed to cut you short since I thank had you. no warning to this time round. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Sarah, for that insight. Also, your penalties will be waived if you voluntarily declare your foreign assets. I'll move to Ian once again. I would like you to share with us the challenges that HMRC has faced uh, while trying to implement or push for voluntary disclosure program and uh, automatic exchange of information between the HMRC and other jurisdictions. So, um, yeah, the, again, if I can just be completely honest with everyone, uh, sometimes, no matter how good an opportunity is, it being delivered by the taxman gives it mistrust. And that will be the case here as well, because what you've got is a bunch of tax people telling you that this is a great opportunity. But Gareth and I have seen this. We've looked through it with the URA. Trust me, it is a fabulous opportunity. And I would encourage everybody to look deeply into it, talk with their advisors about it, and consider the differences between taking up the opportunity and not. Don't take our word for it. Read the paperwork and see what's there. The second significant issue that we face with voluntary disclosure opportunities is making it so that it's acceptable um, in the way that it's operated. And by that I mean um, some of this gets very technical, some of this is very, very much in the realm of tax. And a lot of taxpayers just want their life to be simple. 
They want an easy way forward to be able to get themselves back into compliance so that they are within the law and they can have a stress-free future without having to worry about the process happening. And the last thing that a taxpayer wants is to come into a process and that process to cause them more stress. And this is something that we've been working closely with URE on for the last uh, 12 or 18 months, Gareth, 18, to make sure that when people do engage with this fabulous opportunity, that the process of engaging, declaring, paying, and then moving on with a stress-free life is as easy and as straightforward as possible. We believe we've got that. There can always be uh, ways to, uh, to improve. And we are having conversations with people like our friends at Price Waterhouse for the easiest way to do it. So yeah, the two main Thank challenges you. we face. Thank you, Ian, for that. Ah. Oh, yeah, we could spend a whole day discussing challenges because, uh, to be honest, they are quite a number. And we'll always experience that as tax collectors in our every day-to-day -day life because of the skepticism and, the, yeah, the doubt that the taxpayer will always have. I've seen the financial institution authority here. I've seen the FCU. I've seen our bank. I've seen Citibank and the likes. So this question relates to the financial institutions. Alex, what is the role of the financial institutions in the implementation of automatic exchange of information and the voluntary disclosure program? Thank you, Tracy. Thank you, moderator. Though you have uh, only uh, recognized the banks, I think the first thing that we need to understand before going to the role is what is a financial institution for purposes of automatic exchange or for purposes of the act that uh, were enacted in 2013. It has quietly broadened the definition of a financial institution from the ordinary meaning as under the Financial Institutions Act or even under the income tax. So under that law, a financial institution includes a depository institution, ordinarily which would be a financial institution or a microfinance deposit taking institution. It also includes custodial institutions. Now here we are looking at the brokers, depositories, uh, custodial banks. It also includes investment entities. Those are funds, uh, issues to do with investment trusts, portfolios, and it also includes specified insurance companies. So those are financial institutions. That's the meaning of a financial institution for purposes of the act and for purposes of the automatic exchange of information. Coming to your question, what are their roles? Uh, basically, it has three core roles. I'll look at the three core roles. One of them is to conduct due diligence obligations conduct due diligence obligations to their customers. I'm aware, and I know that there are other laws that allows them to do the due diligence, but this is going to be additional due diligence for purposes of uh, automatic exchange of information on the financial accounts. The law bits guides, that is section six, there's, imposes that obligation, but also guides what kind of due diligence that they will have to do. The second broad role of the financial institutions as defined would be reporting obligations. They do due diligence, collect information at due diligence, but that information is not supposed to gather dust or be kept by the financial institutions. They are required to report. Per the law, the reporting period, I think, is every 31st of May, every calendar year. They report to the Commissioner General, who is the competent authority. And there is a standard form that has been alluded to that they will be using for purposes of reporting, and that is under Section 7 and the standards. Lastly, uh, it's maintenance of uh, information which they will have generated during the due diligence process. Moderator, thank you. Uh, thank you, Alex for that, and yeah, for the correction, the financial institutions under that act does not limit 
its definition to the institutions under the Financial Institutions Act 204. It extends to the insurers and all other listed entities that are in charge of financial information. Uh, I would mean to ask, what is the role of the central bank? Partly the central bank is the regulator for the one arm of the financial institutions, as I've described what financial institutions are. Uh, those are the depositories. They are largely regulated by the, by, by the central bank. So basically the central bank, as a regulator, would highly play a coordination role. Thank Together. you, Alex. Uh, I just wanted to highlight that fact because I know that Bank of Uganda is here and the financial institutions must be wondering whether Bank of Uganda is going to report to the competent authority, who is the Commissioner General of Uganda Revenue Authority, uh, their role, as said, is basically to supervise the financial institutions that it's mandated to supervise and regulate. In case of failure to meet your obligations, then they will help the competent authority to enforce that obligation. Thank you. That's the end of our discussion today. We hope you've learned a lot. I would request the panelists to take their seats. Sorry. We, we can give them the British one until they, they are seated. Flowers are in order. And uh, once they have seated, we can give them the Ugandan one, including Tracy. I thought she did tremendously well. Asante sana. That one was for Tracy. Asante sana. That one was for our panelists who really gave us a lot. Um, it is at this point, according to the program, that uh, we get to listen to uh, the Commissioner General of Uganda Revenue Authority. But before we do, please allow me to uh, make mention of uh, a few more delegates that have come into the room. And uh, again, these are high net worth individuals who are really contributing significantly to Uganda's coffers. And, uh, one of them is Mr. Virani, I mean, he's in the room, he can wave. Thank you. The other one is uh, Mr. Shonubi, who is also well represented. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for making the time to come and partake of this information from the source when it is still very, very hot. Um, I would like to request a member of uh, the URA TV crew to help me with uh, the microphone. We've been blessed with an opportunity to have one or two questions. If there is a question that you would like to have answered by any one of the panelists, this is the moment. So you can put the hand up and you get ready to fire, then we give you the microphone. Thank you so much, Alex. Mm. 
That must be Charles Lubega. Yes. Thank you very much. I wanted to ask, is there any kind of statutes or limitations as in on how far back, for instance, if you ever had property or anything abroad, say 10 years ago, are you obliged to report? As in, if you don't anymore, and you did before, mm. is there any kind of statute of limitations? Powerful question. The possession is historical. It's no longer your property, but you had it. Powerful. That one was for who? Just so we can guide the question directly to any one of the panelists? CDT. Joseph, you might want to start by introducing yourself. Thank you, moderator. I shall do exactly that. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Joseph Balikudembe and work with the Exchange Information Office in the Uganda Revenue Authority, Tax Investigations Department. About the statute of limitation, by law, URA can audit um, three years backwards, and in case there is fraud, there is no limit on how far back we can go to audit or investigate. Now, the question you raise about whether we can collect tax or we can look into matters relating to a previously owned asset that is no longer within your um, ownership or control uh, goes back, I think, to the fundamental principles of tax. Do you um, have income that is, ta that is subject to tax in Uganda under uh, um, the charging section for the Income Tax Act? So it's a matter of fact. And that's what I would invite you to look at. Uh, what we're looking at to achieve here is, do you have any form of income? And that's why CDT was uh, very intentional going to the different categories of passive income, dividends, interest, royalties, um, the rent that comes from assets, all these other things that could potentially require you to declare and pay tax. Again, it's a matter of fact and taxation is really a practical, a practical matter stipulated by the law. So if you have a taxable income, then we look at the tax base, we look at the expenses for the year, give you a foreign tax credit if you paid income against that tax, and what is left is what is due for uh, tax in Uganda. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I've been told that the Wood Mackenzie Prize winner has something to add to that. Please, Tracy. In addition to what Joseph has said, the law in Uganda requires you to keep records for five years. So we would, would be free to go back to five years to look at the information that you had and the income that you had. Then beyond the five years, it can only arise where there is fraud or there is an investigation. OK. Uh, my name is Anil Patel. Um, I work with many taxpayers. I'm a partner at Grant Thornton. And, uh, you know, we try to uh, inform all our clients, engage with our clients. A lot of information we know uh, from the books of the clients. And we choose to talk, talk to clients about voluntary disclosure program, especially under automatic exchange of information. But the challenge that we face, and this question goes to Ian from the perspective of uh, United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. Have you been facing the challenges in terms of the tax rate? Because when you ask taxpayers to declare their affairs of the past, of course, in terms of the foreign investments, being a resident in Uganda, they look at 
the, the benefit beyond interest and penalty, especially the tax rate where 40% as individual tax rate or capital gain tax rate, which will be the case in most cases of the investments. Have there been a consideration on the, on the tax rates? Because I have experienced such incentive program, voluntary disclosure program in India, in Kenya and few other countries, wherein they come up with a specific period of time, not, through, not, not the open uh, uh, limit, that should you declare this, 100% without exception, no errors, no omission, 100% honest, then this is the tax rate you pay up to this time. This is something which I personally feel that to, you know, to make people think a voluntary declaration is required. Is this something that in UK you have had experience with? Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for that question. Uh, I wasn't sure where it was destined until I had the word UK. Uh, yeah, so uh, varying tax rates from um, state to state are always something that we're mindful of in the UK. Um, the voluntary disclosure programs that I've been a part of, the tax has always been the tax is the tax for that year. Um, the tax rate has been the year in which the tax should have been paid and the incentives have all come by ways of um, reduced interest or reduced penalties or um, other forms. But I can understand exactly what you're saying in that uh, offering a lower tax rate is an incentive to declaration. The only problem there is that the, um, the states that are defining the tax rate have to be mindful of a race to the bottom where everybody reduces their tax rate to try and get tax in that country and assets just move around the world until nobody's paying much tax at all. It's a, a real high level discussion which kind of takes it out of where I can comment and into the URA's preference and uh, the, the, you, um, the, uh, the government's uh, preference for how they think best to encourage the maximum amount of revenue. But what I will say is that the the best way to encourage tax in a country is often when everybody starts to see the benefits. When um, the taxpayer pays the tax, their tax generates benefit for the, for the taxpayer. The taxpayer is sometimes happier to pay a higher rate of tax because it generates more money for that taxpayer. But yes, it's definitely something that we're mindful of in the UK, and I know it's something that they're mindful of in Uganda. Uh, thank you so much for sharing the, the experience from the UK. We do have a question on uh, exactly there. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ian Sensenoga. I'm representing Mr. Joseph Masiko from Kampala Social Advocates. Uh, this is a very good initiative, and uh, I think I'll pose my question and send it to Alex. It was asked to elaborate the benefits of how this is going to benefit the Ugandans. But I think he, he most highlighted the benefits of how it's going to develop the base of increasing the revenue for URA. And I think this is the, this is the, the bottom line is how are we going to trick it down to the Ugandans who are doing business in Chikubo, away from someone who is doing a, a recruitive business up, uptown in Nakasero because this is where most of the money that is helping our economy is coming from. And uh, the earlier we do it, and maybe this is the strategy that we're going to come up with to show people how this is going to be beneficial, because a one person will have a business in Chiseka or Chikubo, and then he has a business in Kenya, he has apartments in Kenya. So how are we going to educate him? How are we going to do it? And then the, the, the spark of is, is the people that are enforced into the market away from Mr. Musinguzi, who doesn't do this, but the team that he has below him has to be so, so intentional because the taxpayer has to know that they value them so that we develop the country and the economy. So this is a very, very important thing, I think, ahead of the kickoff for the initiative that has started. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much for that submission. Alex will take on the question. Thank you, thank you. I think you have asked the question and answered it as well. 
the people in Chikubo, the people in offices, the Ugandans, really what they want are services. And the government can only extend these services if they have the resources. And one of our resource basket is the taxes. So if you widen the tax base, if we are able to tap in those that want to invade taxes, the government will have enough resources. Once they have the enough resources, incentives are going to be extended. Good services are going to be extended to all citizens. And where there are services, where there are infrastructure, then the person doing business in Ichikubo will be facilitated to do his business. Secondly, if we widen the scope, currently we have very few people. So the whole burden is on a few people who are paying the taxes. The Chikubo people you're talking about, the people in Nakasero who are running offices, are they the only ones paying the taxes. So if we widen the scope, we also lessen the burden on those people who are paying. So we are all looking at developing the economy, developing the country for the benefit of everyone. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Alex, for that response. We do have a question from Sir Simon Muyanja. Thank you very much, uh, Simon Muyanga Rutaya. I call myself a business education activist. Uh, my question is, uh, first I want to commend the, the, the idea uh, that you are every day comes up with something new. But this is the question in my mind as a layman. First, when you talk about voluntary disclosure, you are talking about a certain degree of honesty for somebody to voluntarily disclose what they're doing. And you know that the reason we have a potential uh, population of taxpayers at 7 million and an actual tax register of 3.5 is that many of our business people are not honest. So before we exhaust our own country and maybe have this tax register grow to around the six or seven million. Don't you risk squeezing it, you already a few in the tax net by this program. I just want you to look at it that way. That even here locally, we still have the challenge of increasing our tax register. We commend you because you have moved from 1.7 to what, where we are now. But there is that pain that keeps coming that even in this, the already compliant few in the tax net will be the very first ones to have this done. Uh, we need to do something about increasing our honesty levels if we must achieve what you, you are doing. Nevertheless, there is no better way to start than to start. You have started. Um, thank you so much, Sir Simon, for that. Um, I'm looking out for someone who, oh yeah, Ian? Yeah, I think Simon's landed on one of the most important things surrounding any voluntary disclosure program. And it has to be that honesty pays. That honesty gives you more benefit. That it puts money in your pocket to be honest. And that is one of the key features with the automatic exchange of information. And it's what I said earlier, is that one of the things in every businessman's mind is, yes, we want these services. Yes, we want these hospital, these roads, these internet connections, these reliable services. But I don't want to pay for them if the guy on the next table isn't. And what the automatic exchange of information puts in the hands of the URA is a degree of certainty that the guy in the next office is going to have to pay too. And the incentives of the voluntary disclosure program mean that being honest pays. Disclosing gives you 
certain benefits that will not be available to somebody that gets caught at a later date. So yeah, absolutely, honesty has to pay. Indeed, it pays to be honest. Uh, thank you so much, our dear panelists, for taking on those questions. I really would have loved to have more, but uh, I can tell you that time is really uh, giving us uh, a hot pursuit. And uh, it is at this very moment that uh, I would like to uh, take us to the next session of uh, today's agenda. Uh, the man that is about to speak to us is behind the evolution uh, that is happening at URA currently. In fact, the launch of a program like this one is very much in line with that transformation that is underway where we are moving from an entity that is uh, hinged on authority to one that is anchored in service. And uh, the man in charge of all of this is none other than the Commissioner General of uh, Uganda Revenue Authority. And he's coming to speak to us about the essence of this that we have just launched here today, that we are launching here today. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. John Rujoki Musinguzi. Our guest of honor today, the Honorable Minister of Finance, Planning, and Economic Development, represented by the Deputy Secretary to Treasury of the Republic of Uganda, Mr. Patrick Ochailap. Um, our distinguished invited guests in your respective capacities Suffice to mention the heads of banks, microfinance, deposit taking institutions, investment funds, the insurance companies, regulators of the financial institutions, the audit firms and tax agents present, some individuals, respected individuals, high net worth individuals, our dear experts uh, are friends from the UK, from His Majesty, His Majesty Revenue and Customs Authority, Mr. Ian Black, and Mr. Gareth Morgan. Our partners, members of the panel, Ms. Pamela Natamba from PWC, and our brother from the Ministry of Justice, all distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, members of senior management from Uganda Revenue Authority and all the staff, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is indeed my honor and pleasure to welcome you to this great engagement. And I bring you warm greetings from Uganda Revenue Authority with much pleasure, I will come you to this very important event. When we launch the voluntary disclosure program, focusing on foreign accounting information and offshore assets under the automatic exchange of information program. Our dear taxpayers and our valued clients, as the world becomes increasingly globalized, and cross-border activities become the norm, tax administrations have agreed to work together to ensure that taxpayers are pay the right amount of tax in the respective tax jurisdictions. The exchange of information, the automatic exchange of information program is a platform that enhances cooperation between tax authorities and brings together
tax administrations in line with the globalized economy. This program promotes transparency and deters offshore tax evasion by allowing countries to exchange financial information automatically and securely. At this time, allow me to throw some light on some of the figures we are talking about. For Africa, which is grappling with the debt to GDP ratio in excess of 60%, it is estimated that about 44% of Africa's wealth lies offshore. It is also estimated that on an annual basis, Africa loses about 50 billion US dollars in illicit financial flows. Bringing these statistics closer to home, the last report that I could land on was not very current, but it was from a credible institution, the Global Financial Integrity Report. And it estimated our own illicit financial flows to be in the range of two to three trillion Uganda shillings. Now this is just a glance at what could happen. Yet, as we lose this much, we continue to grapple, to grapple with low tax to GDP, with incapacity to fund our budgets, and therefore a continuous appetite for borrowing and begging. So friends, as we look into the future, Uganda Revenue Authority is positioning itself to play the critical mandate that we have of mobilizing sufficient revenue for our national development. And there are many initiatives that we are putting in place to make sure that we collect the right tax. And this is one of them. So at this juncture, I would like to appreciate and acknowledge those who have been very supportive in this journey of increasing the revenues that we so badly need for the development of our country. And the first group that I would like to thank are the distinguished ladies and gentlemen in this room, our taxpayers. Thank you very much for sacrificing and fulfilling your civic obligation by paying your taxes. It is true, as has been put by my brother, Mr. Simon Utaya, that our register is still small compared to our population. And our level of voluntary compliance is still low. But we are working on unlocking those bottlenecks that have been making compliance difficult. And part of that has not been your fault. Some of it has been our fault as tax collectors, but we are addressing that. I would like to announce to you that effective last night midnight, Uganda Revenue Authority launched a revamped and transparent tax ledger registers for all our taxpayers. And as we speak right now, there's a training that is going on for the large taxpayers. So I'm eager to conclude this meeting and allow some of you who want to join that training. What this does, we are transparently displaying the tax registers to all our taxpayers in a very clear uh, periodic, clearly categorized per tax head, so that everybody who wants to know what their tax obligation or areas are can do this without needing much help from any tax collector to interpret it for him. So my brother, Mr. Neil, the many fights we have had over inaccurate tax ledgers, over unclear principal and penalty amounts is coming to an end. 
just after this meeting, try and view your tax register. You'll find it different. You'll find our own web portal different. We've always had a web portal that has been difficult for you to navigate and find services that we offer. We have revamped that. We have revamped our, our tax ledgers. We started the transitioning with the large taxpayers midnight last night. And like any new system, maybe there will be some uh, errors or some things that will not flow well. But I can assure you where we are going, we can see it. We shall have a better relationship with our taxpayers because our biggest conflict with especially you, the high net worth individuals and the large taxpayers and the credible tax agents, our battle has been around the ledgers and we are solving that. I thank the ladies and gentlemen of Uganda Revenue Authority, the technical team that has been behind this move. I can testify they've not had sleep for the last three months. They've not had no weekend and they've worked every day and every night without necessarily getting any extra incentive. But we are deliberate. We know that some of the obstacles to compliance has been the weaknesses on our side. So this is one other good program that we are bringing on board. And at this juncture, I would like to thank the experts who have supported us on this journey. Our brothers from the UK, thank you very much for hand-holding us. For You've been there for us, and we are learning from the best. You will even begin to realize that our language is improving. Maybe you are used some very hard emails coming from URA. This will come to an end very soon. We will be polite. But true information is power. With this kind of information at our disposal, we will be able to effectively determine what is the fair tax for every citizen and everyone who is playing a role in our economy and earning some income. Therefore, voluntary disclosure comes in handy. We can voluntarily disclose and we pay only the tax that we are supposed to pay without compounding it with interest and penalty for non-disclosure. And as you rightly asked the question, I think it was Mr. Neil who asked how long can we go back? No, I think it, is, uh, it was another person. Yes, uh, I, 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 but that was a very valid question. How far back can we go? As Uganda Revenue Authority, we have no intention to go beyond the three years that we expected to audit your books. So if you can voluntarily disclose the activities in the last three years, that will be sufficient. The only exception to that period is if we think the information given is not complete or if we think uh, there is some element of fraud. So with voluntary disclosure, if you can give us what you have uh, what you should have earned in the three years and you do it transparently and openly, I think we'll be good to go. And then you can have a peaceful night, rest, knowing there is nothing hanging around your neck to take away your freedom. Every individual who participates in this program will have the automatic benefit of improved compliance status with the URA. And there are many benefits that come with this. If you are an importer, we have some preferential treatment for those that we trust as compliant taxpayers. We call them authorized economic operators. If you're a large taxpayer, you also will be treated with a lot of efficiency and uh, preferential treatment once you are totally compliant. Requests like, uh, like uh, TCCs will be processed automatically and many other services. So ladies and gentlemen, a compliant taxpayer will have uh, many benefits as an individual. But the bigger question of the citizens of Uganda, the question that was raised by the gentleman from KAA, Ugandans will benefit because taxes are for service delivery. So if we can be able as a nation to raise enough taxes to repair our roads, to fix our hospitals, to educate our children, facilitate our soldiers who protect us, then Uganda will be a peaceful country for all to enjoy. But more so, 
as a nation, it is also time for us to stand for our sovereignty. I do not have to mention some of the pressures around us today are a warning sign that we must be self-sufficient. And this is the agenda of Uganda Revenue Authority. We will work day and night. We will expand the tax ledgers. We will improve our service delivery. We will bring programs like this voluntary disclosure and we'll make sure that we raise enough revenue for our national development. But this is not a journey we can walk alone, and this is the reason for this engagement. We will bank on you, our credible tax agents, to advise the taxpayers correctly. And at this point, I want to appreciate our brother, Mr. Neil from Grant Thornton. We had an engagement in this hall uh, a few months ago, and I mentioned about this law. It had just been passed, and I asked the tax agent uh, Grant Thornton to encourage their clients and I want to thank you Mr. Neil following that meeting I started receiving some voluntary disclosures please keep it up and let the rest of our colleagues in this space take up the example we will receive I promise you that Uganda Revenue Authority will serve you efficiently once you disclose we will get back to you and we'll make sure that all the interests and penalties that should be paid or waived, and then you pay the right tax. As I conclude, I don't want to miss this opportunity to remind you about another important waiver that is in our law, which is expiring in one and a half months. This is uh, TPC, the Tax Procedure Code, Section 40D. This waiver will, this, this, this waiver will benefit everybody who has tax arrears and is able to pay the principal before 31st of December 2023. One of the things that has made it difficult for people to embrace this has been the, 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 the ledgers that have not been separating principal from interest. So the taxpayers would log on and then they would ask, what is my principal? Those that have approached us, we have calculated their principal manually and they have paid and they are free and their uh, interest and penalties have been waived. But now with the revamped ledgers that I've mentioned, which we launched last night, everybody can see this on their own. So my brothers and sisters, I want you to take this message across, tell all our taxpayers, whoever has been suffering with a tax debt of Uganda Revenue Authority has an opportunity to pay just the principal tax. It is not a favor. He will, need to, he will not speak to any tax officer. We have automated that process now. Go on your account, pay the principal, and you'll get a message that all the interest and penalty have collapsed to zero. I encourage you to embrace this as we close this calendar year. So our guest of honor, uh, uh, Mr. Patrick Ochaila, representing the Honorable Minister of Finance, we want to thank you for the support you have given us as a ministry to move this far on this front. The authorized person in any government to give this kind of information is the Honorable Minister of Finance. But he delegated that authority to the Commissioner General as the competent authority to share this information. We thank you for trusting us with that responsibility. But we also want to thank you for all the other support you have uh, given us in passing critical laws, the law that was passed to facilitate exchange of information uh, in May this year was fundamental. It puts us very close to an efficient way of exchanging information globally. Note that before September 2025, we do not have access to information. We have it, but it's manual. It takes longer. So we thank you for helping Uganda and uh, making sure that we are part of the Convention for uh, Mutual Administrative Assistance and that going forward, Uganda will be recognized as one of the trusted partners that can securely and safely exchange information with the global economy. This will take us far. As you've rightly indicated, we've been able to collect about 256 billion through this program. When it is manual, when it takes us six months to collect the information, the moment it's automatic, we should be able to benefit the way other jurisdictions have benefited. As looking at some statistics, and for South Africa, 
Last year alone, they were able to collect 312 million US dollars through automatic exchange of information. A similar story is told about Ghana, Nigeria, Mauritius. Those are some of the African countries that have already stepped into this space. Uganda is looking forward to join this great club at the beginning of 2025. But even before we get there, let's embrace voluntary disclosure. Let's work together honestly. Let's raise enough revenue to build our nation. With these remarks, I would like to once again thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for saving time to come and be with us this morning. This is just the beginning. We'll have many other engagements in the days ahead to explain this concept further. I thank our experts for traveling from far to come and be with us. Uh, Morgan and Ian, thank you so much for joining us again. I want to thank our guest of honor, our Honorable Minister of Finance, represented by the Deputy Secretary to Treasury, Mr. Patrick Ochailap, for saving time to come and spend the better half of the day with us as we launch this important program. It is therefore my singular pleasure and honor to welcome you, Honorable Minister, to come and address this gathering and also assure the citizens that going forward, we will all join hands to raise enough revenue and we will save you from the burden of borrowing and begging for the operations of our country. Thank you very much, Mr. Patrick Ochailap. You're welcome. I'll have to adjust the microphone uh, to commensurate with my vertical challenge. Patrick Ochailab is my name, as you have heard. I'm representing the Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development, who has had another assignment, and his other colleagues equally have been deployed elsewhere. Therefore, the hammer fell on me to come and represent him. I'll do exactly that by reading a statement he would have otherwise read to you. The experts from His Majesty's Revenue and Customs um, section, Mr. Gareth Morgan, Henry, and Mr. Black Iron, the Commissioner General of Uganda Revenue Authority, our esteemed taxpayers, distinguished representatives from different ministries, departments, and agencies, ladies and gentlemen, I extend a warm welcome to you all and thank you for accepting to take part in today's launch of the Voluntary Disclosure Program. This launch is an important milestone in Uganda's journey towards full implementation of the Convention on Mutual Administrative Assistance in Tax Matters Implementation Act that was enacted by Parliament of Uganda on 1st July 2023. By enacting this law, Uganda joins a list of more than 120 countries that have committed to tackle illicit financial flows and enhance domestic revenue mobilization through automatic exchange of information. Implementation of this automatic exchange of information is crucial, a crucial, a crucial investigation and enforcement intervention in Uganda by namely increasing our effort in domestic revenue mobilization, whose pillars have been uh, started in the last five financial years and covered IFRIS, for example, digital stamps, automation of government, I mean, uh, revenue collection systems, linkage with other agencies of government in order to share information and become a source of information for assessment of taxes in the right way. We shall continue this journey, and this one, is one of those journeys that are meant to expand the tax base and transparently handle the tax affairs of all taxpayers without segregation. Particularly, it hinges on the fiscal response to Uganda's need for us to raise revenue to finance a larger part of our expenditures. As Commissioner General in his concluding remarks said, we clearly need to enhance revenue collection and move away from the fiscal stress of borrowing. Most countries, because of the pandemic, as well as the supply 
chain constraints in the world after, part, uh, after COVID, as well as the difficult situation the central banks had, and interest rates increased globally, are actually having a bigger burden and suffering from a bigger burden of external borrowing, let alone internal borrowing, because the economies had to adjust to the monetary aspects in order to contain inflation. That went ahead with a large fiscal burden on most of the economies. So we want to minimize reliance on borrowing in order to finance our expenditures. As Ian mentioned in his presentation and submission, this will help us link to the taxation of those transactions, which are for residents outside, I mean within Uganda, but for income derived from outside. And collecting more revenue therefore means we are linking that with improvement of services. Improvement of services domestically means that you can now do business competitively. Doing business competitively means that you are able to prosper as government increases revenue, businesses prosper through doing a business competitively. Therefore, it's a win-win situation in terms of the benefits out of this facility. Government of Uganda, through the Minister of Finance, has identified and pursued strategic partnership with His Majesty Revenue Customs, an organization for economic cooperation and development. These partners represent a unique forum where government of Uganda collaborates to develop policies and standards to promote sustainable economic growth, but also share experiences and solutions to common challenges associated with taxation of cross-border transactions in a highly integrated, transparent, and globalized economies. The launch of the Voluntary Disclosure Globalized Econo Program, a partnership between URA and Her Majesty's Revenue and Custom Services, is an attestation of this strong relationship. I commend Her Majesty's uh, Department for this cooperation. Obugala Wanangi. Uganda is among the 167 jurisdictions dedicated to improving transparency and the exchange of information for tax purposes. As already mentioned by the Commissioner General of Uganda Revenue Authority, Uganda started implement, implementing the exchange of information, although on a manual basis, in 2014, which yielded the tax revenue that has been mentioned, about 243 billion. It's paltry, but it's a very good start. It's adding a stitching time in order to help us solve our fiscal problems. Now, we are on a journey to implement the second leg, automatic exchange of information, by September 2025. We don't have to wait until then to start implementing. We have started in a modest way. We have enacted a new law, the Convention of Mutual Administrative Assistance in Tax Matters Implementation Act 2023, which mandates the Ghana Revenue Authority to exchange financial account information with the treaty partners on a reciprocal basis. The new law require, also requires reporting financial institutions, reporting financial institutions to provide the information on the account held on by a non-resident person to a competent authority, which is URA. The voluntary disclosure program is now the opportunity window for you, the taxpayers, who have underdeclared, not willfully, or underdeclared incomes and assets in foreign jurisdictions to come forward and voluntarily disclose those assets or incomes to the Uganda Revenue Authority. It's a neutral game. Starting January 2024, financial institutions around the world, including Uganda, will collect this information in anticipation of exchange of the same. I appeal to all banks, insurance companies, investment, investment and fund managers, together with their regulators and supervisors, to, uh, to, en to engage the Uganda Revenue Authority in order to ensure a smooth and effective implementation of the new law and the underlying international obligations and commitment to tackle illicit financial flows. Of course, borrowing from my heart where I was in Financial Intelligence Board, board this is one of the things that FATIC, FATIF and ICRG, ICR, ICRG actually pay a lot of attention to, and Uganda certainly 
is part and parcel of that ecosystem and financial system to ensure that we have a clean economy for all our transactions and business relations with the rest of the world. It is therefore in this regard that I am launching the Uganda Voluntary Disclosure Program, where all eligible taxpayers are invited to voluntarily disclose, disclose which comes with grants of a waiver on sanctions and penalties and puts taxpayers on a path of voluntary compliance for the future. URA has tools to conduct comprehensive audit and tax investigation that might result in prosecution where URA discovers that you have underdeclared foreign assets. But I don't want us to emphasize that. Let's have neutral ground where all of us certainly declare. But of course, if you want to be out of liar, that will be your choice. Automatic exchange of information creates a stability and transparency in the dom domestic banking sector that allows taxpayers to tap into the massive investment opportunities in Uganda, among others. This voluntary disclosure opportunity for taxpayers represents the outcome of several years' work from the enactment of the voluntary disclosure provisions in the tax law to designing targeted opportunities for disclosures. It has involved a range of consultations from URA, Ministry of Justice and Constitutional Affairs, my ministry, and international experts in the field in its drafting and design. I thank and congratulate all those who were involved in their efforts to date and even going forward in execution of implementation of this law. In conclusion, therefore, I urge our taxpayers to take advantage of the voluntary disclosure window as a win-win for government to collect an enhanced revenue collection on one hand and for taxpayers to transparently comply with their tax obligations and in return get better services for expansion of their business for shared prosperity. The nation called Uganda comes prosperous through your payment of taxes. Invest those taxes for services for you to expand business. When you expand business, you prosper. And the people of Uganda set on the path for prosperity in a balanced win-win situation. Uganda Revenue Authority is ready to explain to you further in these and many more fora, which I recommend they should organize, should you have the need for more details on this voluntary program for foreign incomes and assets. I thank you all for God and my country. Thank you. Um, a proper asante sana for Mr. Patrick Ochailab. Let's first warm it. This is important. Asante sana. Beautiful. And indeed, at this very minute, uh, our guest of honor is going to be joined by uh, the Commissioner General, by the Commissioner TID, by the Commissioner Domestic Taxes, uh, by our panelists, because we are going to have a digital launch of uh, the AEOI Voluntary Disclosure Program right here, right now. It's a digital launch. And, uh, of course, some taxpayers. Uh, I'm inclined to invite Mr. Charles Lovega. Uh, is, a, is a name that came to mind real quick. Uh, Mr. Shonubi, uh, our friend from Grand Thornton, Powerful. PWC, of course. Um, representation. All of you are here, by extension, <laughs> through them. This is a beautiful product for both the collector and uh, the administrator. I think we are headed for the very best. Okay. We go for the launch and we make it official.
Africa we clap until we can't clap anymore. But yeah, this is it. It is official. We have launched it digitally. Thank you so much for making the time. Congratulations to Uganda. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, we are also going to have a very light moment as we witness uh, a handover of appreciation by the guest of honor to our panelists. So the panelists, please, don't go nowhere. Stay around. Uh, there's something really small for you from uh, Honorable Patrick Ochailap. Mr. Patrick Ochailap. That particular one is for uh, the Commissioner Domestic Taxes, CPA of there, Ms. Sarah Chelangat. It is declarable. Mr. Gareth, Thank you much. from Uganda to you. Mr. Ian from HMRC. We appreciate. Mr. Alex Biarohanga, thank you so much for sharing your wealth of knowledge with us. Pamela from PWC. Thank you so much for sharing your wealth of knowledge. Not just today, but always. She's an ever present. And lastly, Tracy, you are his very own and uh, the Wood Mackenzie winner 2023. Thank you so much. Again, a huge round of applause as uh, they take their seats. I love it when events end early because we've had a Kodak moment. We've had a big moment. We've had the big launch. But please be sure to get a coupon for lunch on your way out. Don't miss out on dinner. Dinner is served courtesy of uh, the government of Uganda through URA. Do enjoy your taxes, at least at this very dinner. Don't leave anything on the plate. From all of us at URA to all of you, thank you so much for making the time. Thank you so much for gracing this. The discussion continues because it's basically only the beginning. Uh, we are going to be coming with powerfully packaged products via URA TV and so many of our communication platforms to make sure that the message gets to absolutely everybody. So when we call upon you, experts, taxpayers, please do make a minute and uh, grace our various platforms so that we are able to have this beautiful exchange. Again, feedback is food for champions. To perfect and refine a product, it goes through consistent improvement. So never hesitate to share a thing or two that you think could actually add value to this. 
uh, from all of us to all of you, adios. For um, the coupons, you'll be getting them on your way up. And we are certainly going to have a minute with uh, the journalists. The friends of the fourth estate are here. They would like to say a thing or two. Yes, before we go for lunch, you'll excuse me, lunch was calling. We need to have the East African anthem and then the Ugandan anthem. Very important. So we shall arise and sing the anthems in the order of East Africa first, then Uganda anthem. Thank you so much for making the time. Dinner is served. Be sure to get a coupon for yourself. And be sure to devour everything. Thank you. Lunch, not dinner. Lunch is served. <laughs>